Hello everybody, my name is Greg Niemczuk and uh, probably a lot of you already know me from my uh, videos about all Chopin's music for piano, uh, from my videos that I just started about Mozart piano sonatas, uh, I'm quite active on YouTube since the pandemic, uh, but today I have something different for you. This masterpiece, which just a little bit excerpt of the ending uh, of it, I present for you now uh, as the beginning of a very interesting journey that uh, I would even say adventure that I have for you today. The composer's name is Mark Kowalczyk. Uh, now probably all the Polish um, people think, oh, Kowalczyk is a Polish name. Indeed, we have in Poland a lot of um, uh, surnames uh, Kowalczyk. So uh, I also thought at the beginning that it's a Polish composer, but no, this is a French composer. Um, I will not talk too much about the composer here in this video. Um, it's much better that you discover him yourself. So. I just um, give you the link to his website so that you can read more about him. He was born in 1973 and uh, he is a French piano teacher, musicologist and a composer. Why I have this piece for you? Well, last year, um, at, at, the, at the end of the last year, I got an email from France with a question uh, if I would be interested in playing a new piece, uh, the title of the piece is Ravari Baroque, and um, so so the uh, mm, recalling Baroque, um, and when I saw the score, I thought, why not? This music is beautiful. This music is modern written just last year but it's very nice to listen to it has a lot of sense and i can talk about it i can make people understand it because it's not difficult to understand and not difficult to enjoy and this is the music that i love to perform uh, even if it's contemporary so um, when i saw this i thought oh my god there is a hope or even more we are living, my friends, in a new era, in a new period of musical history. And uh, Mark is proving us that it is already happening. Mark and all the other composers. Uh, composers, artists that have enough of all these experiments or that took place in the 20th century, that of the music that, in fact, is not understood by many. In fact, it, I would say 80-90% of music lovers uh, just don't want to really hear such a music. And it's not a compliment uh, for the artist, even if he thinks that, oh my God, they don't understand me, but I'm so great. Um, well, it happened before, that's true, but um, I think the there, there was a drastic change of the musical language in the 20th century, which, um, which simply many people used to the classical music as it was. Uh, they don't really absorb and don't, don't understand. So either we have to explain it to them very in, a, in detail, or we don't care about them. That's another thing, which is not my philosophy at all, because in, in my opinion, music should make us happy. Music should make us should comfort us, should talk about the emotions that we have. And also, in this case, this music should uh, make you want to learn this piece. And that's the idea of this piece. A few words about the piece. It will be, a there is a world premiere on the 22nd of January um, this year. So it's exactly today. That's exactly the day when I'm recording this video for you as well. Um, and the intention of the composer was to pay tribute to the Baroque music. 
with a lot of stylistic elements borrowed from Bach, of course, and you will hear it uh, when I play it for you. And I make a short, well, analysis, so to say. But adding a very modern way of playing, almost like a pop song. And the, se the, the, the sectioning is done to allow an easier learning without the score by memorizing and imitating a professional pianist. Its aim is to renew the transmission of music without the score, just with the ear and the emotions, so that any pianist, even a beginner, can try to play it. Well, I would say this is maybe a little bit too difficult for the beginner, uh, at least playing it with tempos that I, um, um, I, I think are, are, are proper, but we will see. So now, not enough talking, let's start the music uh, as, as soon as possible, so that you can get to know this wonderful piece written just last year. So I think I will, I will play for you one big sequence of the piece and then we will have a short conversation of it. And then we proceed, continue, continue. And at the end of the video, I will play the whole piece for you. Okay. So now let's start from the, I would say the introduction. So the beginning, which is opening the mood and is inviting us to the world of this uh, music. here that is the introduction in which many very important things is happening most of all we hear the general harmonic structure of the piece so the general chord structure um, we the, this all the chords that we hear which as you probably noticed are being repeated uh, as a kind of mantra they will be used throughout the whole piece which makes it easier for our subconscious to absorb. Uh, we feel close to this music because we immediately understand it. What are these chords? We have them at the beginning. The beginning of the piece, as you could see, starts in a kind of like a raindrop, we would say. We have a raindrop prelude by Shaw, right? 
and it's a very uh, kind of similar um, way of writing the same notes repeated all the time on the pedal very soft and then this is the background then we have the main chord structure of the piece repeated but now here we have the kind of polyphony in the right hand which I love this moment because we have two voices and they are changing and we we as pianists we can play with this because we can make a we can zoom you know as in the camera or in the on the phone we can zoom one voice to show the listener that it's changing just listen first the upper voice And then the lower voice, and upper voice, lower voice, upper voice, lower and both. Actually, this is now there is upper. And now here we continue with the same structure, but another kind of variation. And what happens here? Can you hear the organ, uh, the instrument organ, which of course Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, the great god of music, used and it was his favorite uh, instrument. We have it here a lot. We hear the organ pedal. So... And here when I play it, uh, if you ever play it, you can watch it as an inspiration. Uh, I hope so, you will do. Um, I like to blur the pedal um, just to have the impression that we play on organ in a big cathedral. Sometimes people ask me, or we have a debate with students or other uh, musicians, professors, can we play Bach with pedal? And of course, most of the world thinks that we should avoid any pedal in Bach because Bach didn't have any pedal, which is absolutely true. Bach had no pedal, but... Have you ever been to Leipzig? Have you ever been to his his church? Have you ever uh, listened to the concert there? Have you ever listened to the organ concert in a big church? Uh, you know how much echo is in there. When I do like this, it stays for a few seconds. And now if you think about it, if we play fast, even if we play this... Um, It doesn't sound in the big church like this. Go... So it sounds more like, right? It's more like the pedal. So if we decide that we play Bach and we want to imitate the organ, then we have to use pedal and even sometimes blare harmonies because that's how Bach uh, heard this. And in my opinion, there is no question about it. But if we decide to imitate a harpsichord or clavichord then there is another story then we should avoid any pedal whatsoever that's true so here i hear the organ so i do a kind of just close your eyes and imagine you are in the big church introduction when the left hand has more to say and then we will have the crescendo which is you know we are building the 
up the first climax of the piece. And then everything stops. And until now, our subconscious heard constantly pam, 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 you know, like uh, in Beethoven's Waldstein. All the time, right? Or in a so this is a typical um, way of putting the listener into the mood of uh, moving, going somewhere, or the time is passing by. The clock is always ringing. Maybe a kind of um, um, maybe symbol that we cannot stop the time that the time is going. Um, a very nice way, but then we stop. And then we have this last part of the introduction, very loud and much faster. With the same thing when it comes to harmonies, we have the same structure. But it is this, this structure is very important because on this structure we will have endless variations later, you will see. So we have... Then the main, I would say, theme, the first theme, very important. The real piece starts here, I would say. Let's listen now. And you will have immediate thinking about Bach, immediate co connection with Bach. Just listen and enjoy. <laughs> stop because here we have a, a little changes of a, a change of the of the structure of the way how it's written although it's not the end of this long big uh, a part which I can we can call it so of course we have a very typical uh, I mean very very typical Bach but very easy to catch connection with Bach so the Mark Kowalczyk is not hiding that he is inspired by Baroque music and especially inspired by Bach music, which of course you know the prelude and fugue in C minor. Right? So, well, I have it a score here and we can even try to compare and see what's the same and what's different. Of course, the, the way how it's written is the same. Uh, this is Bach. so on. And this is Kowalczyk. Let's compare the energy. Here we have the, the, uh, the release, like the, the beginning, no tension whatsoever, then tension, then more tension, phrase. Here, what do we have? Tension. 
writing at the beginning but of course um, well left hand is a little different in Bach we have the, the second here we have just a chord now my friends very important thing this is also based on the same harmonic structure so on the same chords that we had before so it's still the same even though it's, this is changing because it's much faster in fact the composer Mark Kowalczyk wrote here not a very fast tempo. He wrote a moderato 100. Which is more or less like this, but I, I, I'm sorry, Mark, if you listen to me. I prefer it a little bit faster um, because I think when I play it a little bit faster, not much faster, but a little bit faster, then the, the piece gets more compact because it, it's a quite a long piece. So it gets more uh, compact and get the the, 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 the listeners are more electrified by this kind of uh, tempo. But of course you can play it slower, you can, you can decide yourself. Um, so as you could hear, we have this, uh, this, this whole Bach uh, prelude um, structure. Um, we sometimes we have the scales and then we arrived to the part when uh, left hand stopped and the right hand has a kind of polyphony. Listen to this. Uh, I have played it already. Why polyphony? Because I hear here a lot of instruments coming in, like in the concerto grosso. First instrument, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then maybe fourth again, and maybe first again. And then from this moment, there is a new part we can call it part B of this fast section, uh, when we have a constant polyphony, and I will show you this. Of course, it's hidden, so you need to have imagination to, to bring it out, but I show you. But before that, um, I want you to show how we can actually enjoy this moment and play with it um, by making many different colors of these different instruments. For example, we can, we can decide which color we want to use to which instrument. For example, um, of course, it is not written in the score. This is all the question of of, uh, of imagination and playing. And you can do it uh, at home by your own fun. You can play with your listeners like this, or you can decide that you want to play everything flat. Of course, it also can be. But uh, but this, I think, it's very very fun. <laughs> Let's continue and now I will play for you the next part and I will uh, emphasize the polyphony that I hope you can you can catch it even if you hear the piece for the first time mm. here because from here starts the next section I call it section C so could you hear this I can play it also the other way around there are there are two ways of polyphony the first polyphony is hidden because we have this very typical for baroque way of playing uh, when one note is repeated and second note is changing where the, 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 the typical example is in the Bach this toccata and fugue and we have this uh, here a very similar structure but of course a different melody but we can we can find here a, a conversation of two uh, instruments the first one now I play the first one softer second I think this is better than 
the previous one. I think the first one should be softer. Listen again. Sorry. And then again it's continuation. Okay, and now let's listen to this is personally my favorite part It's the hardest part to play because uh, the pianist needs to have a good technique. So in this case, the amateur amateur pianist might have a problem with playing this part because is all the time um, playing um, very fast notes using the wrist and you can feel pain in your hand because the can get, can get tired um, when you play it in a long time and this is a long time because now we will we will grow like a typical Bach music when we go Bach goes to God goes up so we will walk we will grow 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 until we reach the climax and it is a fantastically written moment i love it and now i want to show this for you listen Suddenly we are in piano and we come back to the to the beginning of this f uh, fast section, so of the of the piece, not the introduction, right? The beginning. Isn't it wonderful? I think it's it's really wonderful. The big growing all the time. There is a hidden um, uh, polyphony in the right hand, uh, and we reach the huge climax and as, as you could see we need to use the wrist all the time when we play this because if we play with only fingers then we get tensed and that's that's the problem so okay then the fast part repeats uh, almost without any changes so i will not present it now i will play it as as the whole piece at the end and it brings us to the next part we can call it part well abc we had that now it's like a d part um, which has again a dialogue and it's written in a kind of baroque free way so in my opinion and here i let myself to play a little bit more free i let's, let's just listen I, I play for you but again we have the same structure so another variation of this chords and there is a one one voice is saying something then another voice is answering sorry this was just the transition or maybe we can call it the, just the transition, maybe not use the letter. Because then starts the next letter, the next variation of the same harmonic structure. Very powerful, again, written for organ. Just listen.
So this is this powerful part. As you could hear in the left hand, we have octaves. <laughs> And then the right hand. So it's a lot of sound. Uh, the, the tempo is also faster because we have triplets. And again, it gets interesting. And then the next part is again another variation of the same structure, another melody. Let's just listen. Also polyphonic. Same car. Can you hear this chords? I play. Right, so it's always the same thing. And actually, we can improvise whatever we want. And so on. So that's. I think that's the idea that we can play it without the score. We can just play, uh, of course, learn what's written, but maybe even add something from ourselves. Why I'm talking about this? Because now, again, Mark is doing something with uh, the rhythm. something that you've already heard at the beginning of this video and this is my favorite moment that's why I started from it I love this moment very much I think it's fantastically beautiful and we have a beautiful um, dialogue of two people uh, which I feel is like two people in love and they just they just hug each other or are sitting somewhere uh, in a romantic beautiful place and maybe just doing nothing, seeing, look, t saying nothing, I mean, just thinking and having this kind of inner conversation, which I hear in this music. First, the first voice, second. changing that uh, now he is louder and she is softer and then we are what are we doing we are coming back to the the beginning of the piece, so the introduction. And 
everything ends in minor, major. Everything ends in the major key. E piano pianissimo, so, just like it started. So, yeah, that's quite a long piece. That's why I think it should not be played too slow, for the concert, I mean. And, well, I am going to play it this year a few times. I'm going to play it in Poland um, on, on two concerts at least. And I'm going to play it in Norway also, um, probably. So uh, I'm sure it will be a huge success. In, I, I can see a bright future for this uh, music uh, because it's just fun to play and also very nice to listen to. So, okay, that's all. Now I will play it for you from the beginning to the end. Maybe without speaking, just playing. And I uh, think you can differentiate these parts. And I hope that this piece is immediately easy to absorb and understand. And even when you want to play it, it will be easier for you after watching to this video. So, Mark Kowalczyk, Reverie Baroque. Memories from Baroque. That's the word I was looking for at the beginning of the video. Memories from Baroque.
Merci beaucoup, Mark Kowalczyk. Thank you very much for watching. And I, uh, I hope you like this music. Bye-bye.